right, Jay, you want a little thoughts on what's kind of rolling through my head? Things I've been going over. Hopefully the information's good. So this past weekend, I had the opportunity to give a presentation, a talk, and actually coach on the floor for the Zone Select Camp, USA Swimming Select Camp. It was awesome because in my new capacity, you know, there's there's no athletes that train up here year round, so we only get to see them on occasional basis, and uh, so I don't get the seasonal plan. I don't get to do micro cycles, meso cycles. I don't get to get out there and really coach, which you and I have kind of talked about is those times when it's 10 degrees in February. And these kids have just been just been getting after it. And they just need a break. And you gotta find a way to go to plan B, plan C to coach with them. The real art of coaching, I guess, is what you and I have kind of always talked about. But anyways, I sat in on a coaches, like a swim coaches talk earlier. And Michael Brooks was one of the very, very best 18 and under coaches in our country. And therefore that would be the world. Um He talked about if they're broke at 12, then they'll be broke at 16. And talking about ingraining really good fundamental practice habits, uh, ingraining really good technique, and uh, hopefully ingraining a lot of uh, aerobic conditioning into these athletes. And, I I mean, it just struck me that uh, it's, it's it's a passage, it's a line that should most definitely be applied to strength coaches especially those working with the high school athletes because you you and I, we were on that panel and we talked with Delancey and Durkee and Kat down in Georgia, um, Sandy, Cliff, University of Texas, Caitlin up at Michigan. And we asked them, you know, what, what do you, what do you guys, what would you guys like to see 18 year olds freshmen stepping in onto your campus into your weight room what they would look like and to some extent they were hoping that maybe they didn't even have dry land because their technique is so bad or the only thing they understand is work capacity with faulty movements and so that if they're broke at 12 they'll be broke at 16 that was my resignation. My resonated with me is in terms of that's that's how we should coach. So if they come in and they have some sort of movement dysfunction or they've got no motor control, no movement proficiency, and we just we just slap them on under a bar and back squat them and bench them and pull them from the floor because that's protocol. That's what we do. You're just. You're playing with fire to see if they're going to get there at the end of at the end of four years, at the end of five years, if you're working with a money revenue sport. And I know a lot of us talk about coaching the fundamentals and sticking to the basics, things like that. But but do we really do that? And then we look at all the different components that go into a, a dry land or a weight room program. And I kind of think of. When I was coaching these kids on Saturday morning, I did a lot of change of direction activities that I learned from Lauren Landau when I went to one of the play summits last last winter, I think it was. And and it was like, we can all go to seminars where we all can hop on YouTube and watch what Lauren does, the exercises themselves, but the thought process, the theory, and the intent behind them is what really hit me and pointed out a void that I had in my previous programming. And, and yeah, he, a lot of the guys that he, he trains are, are ground-based football guys or, or mixed martial arts guys, <clears throat> MMA. He's probably, the, he and Brett Bartholomew are probably the best UFC training guys this country has to offer. But the human brain doesn't differentiate, right? So if we're trying to cha- train change of direction or speed play ability to to change your your movement biomechanics while going fast with with very minimal deceleration when i sat in that that talk i was like that's that's coming in and out of the wall that's that's 
power absorb power acquisition on relay starts, which is the name of the game if you're training kids at the NC2A level. Uh, if you train IMers, they're changing movement biomechanics. Uh, once every 50 meters or once every 100 meters in the IMs, I mean, have we given them the skills? Have we trained their brain or have we facilitated the brain the way the coaches have to make those changes? Have we, have we, done, have we done these athletes a service by giving them skills that will allow them to do those things? You know, you know, the the story that Michael always talks about, Bob always talks about, that you know, that 200 fly in Beijing was goggles filled up, and he did it all on stroke count. I mean, that's that's a coach who coached someone to the absolute very best movement proficiency, awareness, motor control. It wasn't just because he was the best swimmer of all time. You know, there was some coaching behind that. And then I, I kind of moved into some of the jump jump acquisition or jump mechanics and again it uh, it's something that I, that I learned on the road this past summer and in at your clinic Jay and it was uh, Matt Tomey's one by 20 and he had kind of talked about some of the specialized exercises that Doc used or Natalia used anyways the shock the shock method and the jump jump method and again how many of these kids yeah they can do 60 box jumps as fast as they can but they're they're jumping just not to scrape their shin or jumping so they don't hit the bottom of their foot on their box they're not jumping to really really develop force and absorb force which is what i think they probably need when they're going in and out of the walls right like they have to learn how to and yeah it's it's non-gravity dependent so we don't have to worry about the wear and tear on their joints but do they have the ability, do they have the understanding, have they been taught that as they go into the walls, they're going to have to have that speed change and absorb, actually hitting that wall, and then transferring that force as best as they possibly can against water resistance uh, and get into that underwater kicking that's so imperative to making them successful um, and winning that, that race on that last 50 or last 25, I guess, if you're talking about short course. So... We did some multi-hurdle jumps into a, a low box jump. And the, 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 the emphasis here was getting them to understand proper landing mechanics, uh, proper jumping mechanics, and then not making the implement so high that they totally lose focus of ability to, to jump with some height and get onto that box. And... Um, and then we kind of went into some to some med ball training, and I think again, the uh, by no one's fault, but the the broke eighteen year olds that come in and they can do med ball activities for they can do med ball activities for sixty minutes straight, you know, fifty seconds on, three seconds off, and just kind of go through a bunch of variety of throws and tosses. And catches and between the leg stuff and other activities because that's what they've been ingrained. But then you actually have them try and do a, a, a med ball overhead throw uh, to try and help facilitate that triple extension movement pattern that they're going to get if they're you know they're down with Matt at Florida, right? He's going to he's going to want them to triple extend. I mean, every coach is going to want them to do that. And so, have we done a job? Have we broke them by just making them can great metabolic? animals great circuit creatures but they can't they can't they can't really generate any sort of force to to throw these implements at great distance or you think about the ability to to with the upper body med ball activity if you're doing it with a partner or against the wall and really just my message to these guys is you, you know absorb the ball coming back from your partner or off the wall and recoil and send that out. I mean, I think about that's that's essentially the eccentric, isometric, concentric phase. It's not swim specific, but that's what the brain's learning when these guys go through the recovery and entry phases. There's got to be some ability to slow the muscle pattern down and then accentuate into the force. Uh, it's not just some, you know, like 
I think of like the Popeye cartoon where he's swim, spinning both arms and, and punching. That's that's not how they swim. There's there is a latency phase where they slow it down, and that's what makes the greats the greats. In in terms of they they always know where their bot their their upper extremity is in, in is in space, and so they they have the ability to slow down and then recoil and and translate force. And that's the message I was kind of given to them um, with the med ball work. So. I guess uh, that's what's on my mind, Jay. Hopefully, this is what you were looking for. Um, Thanks for everything you do. Thanks for your sharing. Thanks for bringing great minds and having them be open, um, having them be uh, vulnerable and saying, I I don't have all the answers, but but here's some things that I do believe work. And uh, have a great week. Have a great week, man. Go, Go Spiders.